Paris. City of love, romance and dreams. So they say. I used to say it too. But ever since that day, the day of the murder, I've always associated my beloved Paris with death. From so Shadow of the Templars, the director's cut. Well, yes, yes, this is what we're playing. Fairy oh. with the crows of flying. New brain. I can't even pronounce that guy's name. Gibbon to key. I actually was gonna play another game, Oregon Trail. Cause I'm gonna do this thing where I just try random things, see how it goes. And, well, I started it, exited out, wouldn't start again. So I wanted this one! It looks pretty cute! So I'm excited! <laughs> I was at home having a bath when my editor called. Collard, get your ass over to the Palais Royale, now! You got an interview. Pierre Carchamp. Yes, the Pierre Carchamp. No photos, so leave your gear at home. He has for you personally. Don't ask me why. Ooh. Anyhow, this could be big, so if he makes a pass, don't forget. Just smile, say yes, and keep taking notes. So charming, and so very apt. Pierre Carchamp was a media king, a national hero and one of the most infamous adulterers in Europe. He and his wife Imelda were just one step down from royalty. Whoa, I hate mimes, but unless you humor them, they don't go away. He is very was, creepy. The palace of the media king and the ice queen. I pressed the doorbell and set in motion a chain of events which would change my life forever. Yes? What is it? Madame, my name is Nico Collard. I'm here to see Monsieur Carchon. Come up, we're on the first floor. Madame Carchon, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, I'm sure. The Ice Queen was certainly living up to her reputation. Will mine. you be staying for the interview? Mademoiselle, I know little of my husband's business affairs, and I care even less. I certainly have no intention of watching him pour over yet another pretty little journalist. Pretty? You're too kind, madame. Uh... Ah, the talented and very beautiful Mademoiselle Collard. Such a pleasure to meet you at last. Big. Monsieur Carchon. I am honored. Oh, I'm sure you are. Call me Pierre, please. But I do not flatter you idly. I was a friend of your father. He was a great man. My father? He never mentioned. He and I were very close. And then his death. So tragic. I must... Um. Imelda, your damned cat's in my study again. Another Ming vase, I suppose. <laughs> Just another. Excuse me for one moment, my dear girl. Cute. You journalists are getting younger each year. Perhaps it's the rest of the world getting older, madame. Oh! That was no cat. My God! What? Monsieur Carson! That was smart. He's dead. I must call the police. You'd better stay here. There was a man. It was the mime. Do you think he... Well, I believe we can rule out suicide, don't you? No wonder they called her the Ice Queen. She would have been top of my list of suspects if I hadn't seen the attacker myself. And if I hadn't come across a couple of murders just like this already. One of the most important men in Europe, murdered. 
And here was I, Nico Coulard, alone at the scene of the crime. Should I wait for the cops? Or start my own investigation? Start your own, girl. It was a no-brainer. Oh. Fox in the bath was disturbed by a phone call from my editor, Ronnie. Uh, this sums up what has happened, I guess. I'm not gonna recall the names of people. Alright. Dang, there's nothing on here for uh, subtitles. Oh well. I already have the music! Alright, let's investigate the body. Mimes and guns don't usually go together, but I had an idea that this was no ordinary mime. Yeah, he was extra creepy. I've come across this murderer before, and written about him. The costume killer. At least that's what I called him. Aww. Some people hate searching corpses for clues. Me, I'm okay with it. Reminds me of an old boyfriend. <laughs> In his pocket, I found a ticket stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. Taking the ticket meant I tampered with the evidence. There was no going back now. Carchon had been shot. Hmm. I closed his eyes. It was the least I could do for the poor fellow. Huh. It was one of my hair clips. My favorite, in fact. It must have fallen when I was knocked down. <sighs> I don't see anything else over here. Look. I opened his eyes. Best to leave the crime scene as I found it. Eh, I'll leave it open. A bust of Pierre Carchon, humble servant of La France. Hmm. Check out the window where he came in. A small round piece of glass had been cut out of the pane. This was a professional job. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to cut myself and leave blood on the glass. Call me old-fashioned, but I like to keep my DNA to myself. <laughs> the killer must have used a ladder to reach the window. He was long gone. Guess he folded that ladder up, popped it in his pocket and took it with him. <laughs> Can I pull the, uh... Not... I can't pull the curtain back closed. I don't want to go out. I don't want to go out again. I don't. Stop it. The killer... Stop it. Thank you. Books. The bookcase was filled with obscure first editions. Hmm. It contained rows of titles I didn't recognize. Another bust. Pierre Carchon again. His eyes seemed to follow me around the room. Hmm. Uh, I think that's the body again. But I don't want the body again. The police could turn up at any minute. Somewhere there were clues to the murder, and I needed to find them. I reckoned that cloth might just turn out to be useful. Even my fingernail wouldn't fit into such a small hole. Hmm, do you have anything I'm... Uh... Yeah! Aha! Uh -huh. Nico, you are just so damn good at this stuff. Instead of comforting Imelda, I was ransacking her flat. Why? Because there was something going on here, and I had to get answers before the cops arrived. Because I'm a journalist. She'd been rude to me, so she had it coming. <laughs> All right, can I close it? All right. Good girl. Something else on here? A magnificent antique table. Take stuff. It was a tube of acrylic paint. French ultramarine. Just the color I was after for my bathroom. I'm sorry, I have to go. Someone is... Young lady, what are you doing? Oh, this paint. <laughs> it's my favorite color. For God's sake, keep the damn stuff. 
Comfort her. Imelda had talent, but I certainly wasn't going to tell her that. Excuse me, madame. Yes? Uh, if Why would a mime want to kill your husband? Pierre had plenty of enemies. Half the husbands in Paris for a start. I am so sorry for your loss, madame. No, you're not. You're a journalist. Journalists don't feel sorry. <laughs> not true. We shall see. Uh, How did your husband know my father? I have no idea. You didn't know him? Thierry Collard? Pierre knew a lot of people I didn't know, most of them women. <laughs> so, her husband took secret boat trips. Did she really need to see the ticket? <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. I don't even know what the heck that is, so I'm not going to ask her about it. Mm, how do I back out of conversation? Why did your husband send for me? What did he want to discuss? I have no idea. His business was his business. He never told you anything? No. And frankly, I preferred it that way. Oh. This is quite a scoop for you. I suppose you're already inventing the headlines. Just because I am a journalist. Don't patronize me. You're all cut from the same cloth. Do you have any moral sense at all? Yes. That's why I do this job. Mm. You do it to see your name in print. As if. My editor gets the byline, I just do the work. Well, don't expect my sympathy. The police will be here soon, madame. Is there anybody you would like me to contact? Family? Friends? No. I have no family. Pierre and I were... He was all I had, really. Not much, was it? The dutiful wife? That was my role. He never talked, never let me in. I know one thing, madame. What? If you want to find out who killed your husband, then you let me do the job, not the police. Why? How do I know I can trust you? I'm a good girl. Your husband invited me here today because he needed me. I think he knew somebody wanted to kill him, and he knew I could help. I doubt it was your database he was after. You're wrong. I was onto his killers already. I am sure of it. Please, you owe it to him. I don't know. All I need is a few more minutes to look around before the police come. You really do have a moral sense, don't you? I trust so few people. And perhaps Pierre really did think that you could help. Of course it wouldn't have stopped him seducing you too. Here, take this. It's the key to the drawing room next to the library at the end of the hall. It was Pierre's room. I rarely went in there. I couldn't. I was too scared of what I might find. Ah, oh, seeing being awesome works. I promise you won't regret this. Yeah, she gave me the key. Doesn't trust you very much, but she trusts you enough, and that is important. Oh, that's a nice little picture. Don't know what it is. But she'll tell me. A medieval pageant. Original, no doubt. The tapestry must have cost a fortune. Do, 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 ba, da, ba, 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 yeah! Locked. The door was locked. But I have the key. Now we were getting somewhere. Into the secret room. Uh. The painting showed the cachons together. In love. As the poet said, the past is a different country. Or did I read that in a fortune cookie? <laughs> There was the very faintest of clicks. Mm. I didn't need the lights on. It was light enough already. Mm. Over here. Check out his desk. As expected, the desk was yet another priceless antique. Yawn. The blotter and in-tray had clearly been placed with mathematical precision. My heart skipped a beat. It was a carved elephant. But not just any carved elephant. It had been made by my father. Aww. I knew for certain because in my apartment I had its exact twin. Carved into a box he had made. So Cochon had known my father. They really must have been friends. 
I decided to take the carved elephant. It clearly meant nothing to Imelda. But it meant the world to you. I didn't need a sheet of blotting paper. Not while it was blank. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. Uh, oof. The paint would have just soaked into the blotting paper, but the idea was good. Okay. Uh, I don't even know what this is. Um, no. <laughs> what is it? A key. Maybe a safe key. Ah, key. Um, no. It was the beautiful elephant my father had carved. The cloth was embroidered with an unusual symbol. Okay, uh, maybe if I put that in there. Um. Nah. Shut the door. Locked. Not surprising, really. Uh, pick it! Pick it with your pair of clip. Do it! Dang it, lady. I'm relying on you. Ooh, a chair. Anything interesting about the chair? This wasn't the time for me to lie on this sofa doing my Marie Antoinette impression. Though it is very popular at parties. Especially with gay guys. Don't ask me why. That's funny. I don't want to go out. There's that there. I know that has something important. I'm missing something though. A step. Oh! Behind the picture was a safe. The safe was locked. I needed the key. Yeah. In the safe was some kind of artifact. There were strange symbols on its surface. It looked like the printer's blocks I'd made at art school. If there was one thing I'd learned about symbols, they are always important. But these symbols scratched into stone were impossible to read. I needed to find a way of printing them. At least the stone was round. But what could I use for ink? And what could I print on? Sure, I was stealing, but I knew Imelda didn't know about the artifact, and Carchon was past caring. I love you. Okay. If I put this on... Stop it, stop it. This on this. Uh, no. Dang it. This with this over here. Okay, let's get in there then. Yeah. The blotter was flat already. Rolling the cylinder across it would achieve nothing. Mm. Eh? I smeared the paint all over the cloth. When I do messy, I really like to put my heart into it. <laughs> I hoped this was going to help. They don't make lace like that anymore. Rubbing the cloth over the blotting paper would make it all blue. I needed to come up with something slightly cleverer. And yep. I wiped the paint-covered cloth over the surface of the stone cylinder. It took me right back to art class at school. And Maurice, my gorgeous art teacher. Such a shame they had to fire him. Ah well, concentrate, Nico, concentrate. Oh my gosh, you're fabulous, Nico. Genius. Yay, the finally. The and the paint worked just as I planned. But what did it say? Uh, it was some kind of coded message. It read, Subjudice. I may not have learned a lot as a journalist, but that was a term I knew well. It means a legal case that is before the courts. Below it was a sequence of letters that made no sense. S -D -S -S -D -S -S. I suddenly realized there was a connection between the boat ticket and the coded How message. Sudden? The boat ticket was stamped Bateau de la Conciergerie. The conciergerie on the Ile de la Cité, by the river, housed the ancient law courts. So, subjudice could, in this case, mean literally, under the law courts, below the conciergerie. 
I was pretty sure I'd found all I could here. And besides, all this opulence was making me pine for my regular life of poverty. This was a huge story. It was also one heck of a puzzle with a lot of pieces missing. But I was going to crack it. And if I could just remember the name of that fancy prize you get for being an ace journalist, I was definitely going to win it this time. <laughs> I'm going to win if I can remember what it was. Good you took it. I didn't need to take the leather holder with me. I didn't want to take the tray, but I knew that I could use it. See, I don't understand what you're saying, but no one um, can no. use it. Yeah, see? I'm not understanding either. Um, no. Seriously, lady, why why are you talking about using a freaking tray? You clearly don't want the tray. Clearly. Alright, let's go. I don't think there's anything else in here for us. It's going pretty good so far, hon. Dang it. Email, I don't want you to show up. Any last details in here? Uh, it doesn't look like it. I think that's the body again. Come on, you go. Yes, it Pierre is. Pierre Carchon was stiff for the last time. Uh, yeah. boop a doop a doop boop 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 Ebody bop bop ba da ba Hey there lady, you still sitting here, that is wonderful. Ah yeah, good to talk to you. Do do do. Did you find anything useful? Yeah. This carving, do you know anything about it? It was Pierre's. What does a statue have to do with... Please, I need to know. He was given it by a friend, something to do with Africa. He never explained any more? No. But I think it was important to him, always on display. Why? It was carved by my father. Oh, I see. I didn't know. Imelda, I will do everything I can to find the killer. Yeah. Thank you, my dear. And if the police ask... Don't worry. You were never here. Subjudice was the key. I was going to have to find a way under the conciergerie. I decided to head straight for the quayside on the Ile de la Cité. If there was a way of getting under the conciergerie, it would have to be from there. I'm really glad you know all this stuff, because I clearly don't. <laughs>